Glenn Rod and Zulu Baraka. Correspondent for Crazy Ass News Network. Only network dedicated to exposing bullshit in high and low places. Suicide bombers are self-chosen martyrs, as some Muslims prefer to call them, have received much attention in the international press. Terrorism and violence have therefore been associated with the religion of Islam, especially since the daring attack on the World Trade Center buildings in New York on September 11, 2001. Islam, unfortunately, is not the only major world religion that has spawned men and women who have been willing to perpetrate heinous acts of brutality against civilian and other targets in defense of their faith. In the U.S., abortion clinics have been bombed and doctors who perform abortions assassinated by conservative Christian religious zealots. In 1994, far-right Israeli man by the name of Baruch Goldstein entered the Abraham Mosque in Jerusalem and opened fire on Muslims at prayer during the holy month of Ramadan. Goldstein succeeded in killing 29 Muslims and injuring another 125. In addition to Islamic terrorists, Christian terrorists, and Jewish terrorists, there are also Hindu terrorists, Sikh terrorists, and Buddhist terrorists. Why do so many religious men and women turn to terrorism and violence in defense of their faith? Do religions provide a justification for extremist violence? Can we anticipate an increase in religiously motivated violence in the future? These are some of the questions on our radar in this edition. So don't go away, I'll be right back. Interestingly, Gandhi did not absolutely oppose violence. According to Gandhi, if one had to choose between cowardice and violence, then violence would be the better of the two options. Deeply religious men and women often view the events of life as the outworking of a cosmic struggle between God and the forces of evil, between good and evil, between light and darkness. The more zealous in all religions therefore feel that it is their duty to defend their faith at any cost. The belief that they are doing God's work fortifies the zealots and provides all the motivation needed to launch them into battle against all the enemies of the faith. Reverend Michael Bray, a convicted abortion clinic bomber in the US, claimed he was defending the right to life of the unborn by bombing abortion clinics. Even though Bray targeted only buildings used for purposes of performing abortions, he was quite comfortable with the notion of killing those performing abortions in defense of the unborn children. 
Now, while it is true that there is a certain macabre logic to Bray's argument, the question that should be asked is, should violence be used against all persons motivated in and advocating the breaking of any of the commandments of the Judeo-Christian God? Just where would such logic lead us ultimately? I suspect this kind of logic and reasoning would lead us right back to the Dark Ages, where violence was perpetrated by Christians against anyone who deviated from the doctrines of the Church or from the laws outlined in the Bible. Dr. Burke Goldstein, who perpetrated the massacre of Muslims at the Abraham Mosque in Jerusalem, was later hailed by some Jewish settlers as a hero and as a martyr. It should be noted that mainstream Jews, both in Israel and in the Jewish diaspora, denounced the terrorist act of Dr. Goldstein. Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin called Goldstein a degenerate murderer. But what is it that drove Dr. Goldstein to become a self-chosen martyr? The choice of February 25 as the day of the massacre may help us to understand Dr. Goldstein's mindset as he carried out his deadly attack. February 25 coincided with the Jewish festival of Purim in 1994. Purim is a celebration of the victory of Jews against an extermination plot in the Persian Empire. It is quite possible that Dr. Goldstein, who was in favor of driving all Arabs out of Israel, may have regarded the Arabs as a modern manifestation of the ancient enemies of Israel symbolized by Haman in the biblical book of Esther. The point I'm making here is that religion has a way of creating some linkages that could prove to be very deadly under the right circumstances. Religious zealots are 100% convinced that they are agents in the hand of God. This makes their actions God's sanction. It is very hard to argue with a person who thinks that he or she is being led by God in pursuit of some purpose. In his book, Power Shift, Alvin Toffler informs us that religious organizations that combine totalism and universalism are some of the fastest growing organizations in the world. Religious fundamentalist groups are mushrooming all over the globe. These religious zealots are at war with modernity, with freedom, and with democracy. They're hell-bent on taking the human family back to a time when myth and superstition reign supreme. Religious fundamentalists want to install religion, laws, and dogmas at the heart of national policy. This is what is driving the culture war all over the world, and regrettably, the culture war will only get worse as religious fundamentalists get better at what they do. We can expect religious fundamentalists to become better organized and more ingrained into the social fabric as they achieve positions of wealth, influence, and power. They will use their newly found positions of wealth, influence, and power to gradually transform societies into their divine blueprint. Some of the most of these fundamentalist groups are ethnocentric, misogynist, homophobic, and xenophobic. As such, therefore, women, the LGBT community, minorities, and generally all outsiders can anticipate much turbulence ahead. This is Lenrod and Zulu Barak, correspondent for Crazy Ass News Network, where our motto is, every day is the same old shit just different assholes.